Harry, Jordy Prepper here, welcome to another Prepper News Network video. Today is the 20th of February 2024. Firstly, we're looking at the state of households going hungry or just simply not having enough food or not eating the right kind of food or skipping meals entirely just because of the cost of things these days. You know, we've got the cost of living going up, inflation's going up, people's wages aren't matching it. This is covering British households, this article, but obviously this translates to any country in a, with a central bank. You can easily associate this with the country that you're in. And really as preppers, we want to be focusing on our number one prep, which is our body, physical wellness. And, you know, like the saying goes, you are what you eat. So if we, if we eat crap, our body's not going to perform as well. If we eat good things, if we exercise regularly, we're going to be physically more capable when it's needed. USA now and the state of Texas, they've been really badly affected by wildfires recently. Apparently the second largest in recorded history. It was so severe that the main facility for assembling and disassembling America's nuclear arsenal had to shut down. Which is not a facility you really want to shut down at this point in time. I mean, you can't contingency for nature, of course. Nature can just completely brush aside any man-made or human intervention. But, you know, I mean, at, at this time, and this act of nature on this particular facility, you know, it, it is surely of concern to the America's military complex, you know, that it happened at this point in time. You know, nature is something that, as preppers, you know, we're obviously preparing for, but... You either basically just got to relocate, get out of the way, or have the facilities in place to to weather the storm, so to speak. So we're going to focus on the Middle East and Israel for the next two or three articles. And Israel is going to supply Ukraine with early warning missile systems. This is a clearly a defensive system. It's can distinguish between lots of different projectiles, drones. It was recently upgraded so that it was more accurate. They were going to supply this as far back as the middle of last year. Israel's basically been hesitant to supply these systems and the reason was because they didn't want to escalate tensions with Russia because obviously we've got to realise that even though it's a defensive system, it's an act of aggression basically. I mean, we can't sugarcoat it. This is going to give them an edge. It sends text to mobiles, sends emails, it does so in like the local vicinity. So people on the ground, civilians, they all get a warning. And if it's going to affect them, it's not like a blanket warning system. So pretty advanced. And off the back of the Ukraine war, uh, systems and military thinking is basically changing. And obviously we've seen the impact of drones in the Ukraine. Israelis have adapted the Merkava Mark III tanks with this anti-drone cage. So, you know, we've seen these drones heading towards military vehicles with explosive devices on them. And they've really had a devastating impact. And these drones that are attacking tanks, I mean, they're really reminiscent of battleships. Everybody was building like the biggest and best battleship. And then these cheap planes with torpedoes arrived and it just made these massive battleships obsolete overnight you know this is kind of a similar thing because if you send in drones to attack tanks and they're having a devastating impact on the tanks which they are effectively tanks are obsolete unless you build a very effective anti-drone system on tanks in the very near future which i'm sure tank developers are thinking hard about now you know i mean essentially it's just going to make tanks an obsolete weapon of war so Hezbollah's been caught using an Iranian Almas-1 missiles against Israeli military sites. And I mean, it, obviously it isn't really a surprise that they're using Iranian weapon systems. Essentially what they'll do is they'll just use this to commit further hostilities against Iran, other strikes, and um, potentially into Syria as well. If they believe that an Iranian-backed militia group is taking shelter in, in Syria, then essentially there's no barrier to who or where Israel can hit anyone. So this article, basically the substance of it is that they, it's explaining the Almas one 
weapon system and what it's capable of. So, like we were talking about in the previous video, this conflict between Hezbollah and Israel is an extremely serious matter and essentially we can say that the war between them has already started. But yeah, we get an insight into basically what Hezbollah or one of the systems that Hezbollah has at its disposal. Many other countries are sending equipment to Ukraine and now the Netherlands has acquired this Dieter self-propelled howitzer. I mean, when you look at this image, it kind of looks like one of these automated generated images that it just looks out of place, you know? I mean, I don't know this weapon system, but I mean, I, I would assume that this is in the mobile configuration because, I mean, this is not a small gun. There's going to be a huge amount of recoil in it. So it's either got a very good recoil system or obviously there'll be some sort of supports that come out of the vehicle there that it's on. It just looks really weird, <laughs> to be honest. Um, essentially, this article just gives a an outline of the weapon system. But with um, NATO encroaching on Russia, uh, the howitzer uses NATO standard ammunition. So, And obviously, NATO have a lot of standardization throughout the industry complex. You know, if they really are going to go up against Russia, then they're going to need all the standardization that they can get. Because uh, that's not going to be a small feat. Netherlands has acquired this and they're going to supply it for Ukraine. So next we're looking at increased concern about lack of ammunition in Ukraine. They're saying now that in Congress they're concerned about a very serious situation occurring on the battlefield where... Basically, they're just going to run out of ammunition to to fight. With the massive advances that Russia's doing at the minute, they're basically steamrolling through areas. And Avdiivka is essentially, it's been like a, a domino effect, really, since they lost Ad Avdiivka. Uh, they just, you know, the Ukrainians are retreating. There doesn't seem to have been an investment in any sort of defensive fortifications behind their lines. It's just simply got nowhere to hide, so they're just having to move further and further, further back. The lack of ammunition obviously isn't helping in this situation because they've got nothing to shoot back. Volodymyr Zelensky is still doing the rounds with his fundraising, essentially, going across the smaller countries, southeastern European nations, coming up support. He's mostly after materials and ammunition. He's visiting a lot of the smaller countries, the smaller territories. And I think what he's trying to do is he's trying to get all these smaller nations on board. And he's not just doing like bilateral agreements with them or mutual defense agreements with them. He's really wanting ammunition. He's wanting materials so that they can continue their industry. It's under a lot of pressure and essentially can't produce everything homegrown. They're going to need to build up a lot more infrastructure within the Ukraine to continue the supply chain. That needs materials that they simply have shorter supply of these days. And one of those nations was Albania. Edi Rama and Zelensky signed a treaty of friendship and helped develop cooperation between them. Uh, essentially what he's doing is, is, is cementing, like I said in previous videos, you know, people... They're essentially, you know, just making sure that everybody who they can get on their side sets it in stone with a signature that they are actually going to support them. NATO is trying to get on board who it wants and Russia's pretty much already got on, on its side, its allies. You look at Albania here and you think, hmm, why would he go to the lengths to set up such an agreement? If we look here, Albania's top 10 exports on this article it's producing everything that Ukraine needs. Its mineral fuels, including oil, accounted to 17% of its exports. So it's got oil. It's got a large clothing base, iron and steel. You know, it's got raw material. Yeah, it deals in electrics, aluminium, ores and ash, vegetables, food. It has a lot of what the Ukraine needs. So it's no wonder that he went to that nation. And got this agreement signed. And this is like a real big win. Having Albania on its side. That's the end of today's Prepper News. Thanks very much for watching. Be safe. Be prepared. And I'll see you in the next broadcast. This has been Jordi Prepper. Signing out.